Amen. All right. So, what we're going to do today is um, putting our faith to work because it is actually important. And um, that's why I would say the topic for today is what um, faith cascade. Now, what is a cascade? How many of us know what a cascade is? Amen. You have been sharing flyers. I don't even check what cascade is. What's a cascade? English people. Huh? Okay, like a waterfall. Huh? Series of events. What, what is cascades to you? So let me just put it. A cascade is a flow. You know, it's a flow. There's, it is continuous. Do you understand? There is actually a flow. So what we could just say is that uh, we're talking about the flow of faith. How faith actually flows. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we say faith cascade, you know, the flow of faith, uh, for our faith to actually produce result. Now, Jesus Christ has said a couple of things. He has given very strong statement. That if you say this, to a mountain move and it shall move. And uh, really, I, I think every one of us, just like um, you look at this door here, you know, this, these are demarcations, and you like, now all of you, if you shout from today to tomorrow, it's not going to demarcate. He said, now, move, 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 move. It's not going to, like, it's not going to do so. But um, our faith actually can get to a point where it can produce things like this. And um, this is, these are misconceptions. And we have to understand context. Do you understand? When Jesus Christ say, uh, is saying a couple of things, we have to understand context. Though, at that particular point in time, when he mentioned that word, there was something that happened. He looked at a tree from afar, it had green leaves, and it was supposed to be the season for the leaf, um, for, for the fruit. And he saw it, and then he rushed towards it, expecting the fruit, and he didn't find fruit in it. And he was really angry, and then he caused the tree. The following day, he returned, and the tree was what? Was dried up already. And then his disciples called his attention, like, look at the tree you caused yesterday. It's dried up. And then he then told them that, you know, don't be surprised about this. Look, have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. If you say unto any mountain, move and it shall what? It shall move. Now, the thing about us is, you know, we have to look at, um, like I said, faith begins with God. Faith, the faith we operate by is always God's idea. And um, there are certain expectations and that's why we must be very careful with our words. When you say, let me give you an instance. Uh, I'm trying to be relaxed, to be calm today. Uh, so I was speaking with somebody yesterday, and when we were speaking, I thought the person that if this, if this particular individual, another individual, steal this money, this particular money, that individual is going to die. And it was like, ah! I was like, you know why? I saw in my scripture, I saw in the Bible, even in the New Testament, that you know, if you take that which belongs to God, there is actually there's a penalty that you can actually declare and it will happen. What's the example, the reference to this? Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Um, it was their own money, but they came and they said they have given it all to God. Do you remember? They came on their own accord that now. We sold everything and everything belongs to God. Now, after saying such, they took out of that which belonged to God. And what happened? They came acting. And then what did Peter do? Peter spoke and then they fell and died. If he had not said anything, they wouldn't die. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, there was a protocol. Yeah, we, that's why we must understand spiritual protocol. How things actually or pray it. Now, it might be God's intention. It's, this is what God wants to do. But if there's nobody to cooperate with God, it's not going to happen. Because he has handed over what the earth to us. That is why it is important for us to only speak. Now, you can see, the, the Bible speaking in the book of James is that in your mouth lies what? Life and what? And death. You can actually speak life or you can speak death. So all you need to do is to what? Discover God's intention, God's heart on the subject. And then you begin to speak. So if it's God's plan for this mountain right now, this physical mountain to move, it's going to move. Now, why did I give this other example here? It's for us to understand realms. Now, because there was a relationship 
beyond the physical that, you know, we can't touch the relationship that David and Albright actually has. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can't touch it. It is not tangible, but it's in the level of the soul. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they could, that is why he could speak physically and David would respond because there is a deeper bond. Now, let's give us an example. Have you seen somebody who you're not close to, who you don't have any connection with, tell you something to do and you're like, why are you speaking with such authority? Am I your slave or anything? Do you understand what I'm saying? Or there are people who go to school and like, my mommy does not beat me like that or my mom or my dad don't talk to me like that. Why, why should you... Do you understand what I'm saying? So people, there are certain expectations. And now, bringing this, no, look, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. What is my goal here? My goal is not for us to live here like, oh, I've heard a lot of things about faith. My goal is for us to get our faith to a point where we can actually maximize and, you know, uh, master faith. Faith is to be mastered. Now, something, you know, a thought past me so that, you know, faith is operating in what? In the unseen world. And for you to operate in the unseen world, you must what? You must actually learn how the unseen actually operates. So you must go through a system of mastery. It's not enough to say God can do it. Yes, we know. You look through the Bible, you see many things. Look, let me give you an example of persons who got to a level and they actually moved physical subjects. The children of Israel, when they were faced with what? With Jericho, the wall of Jericho. And God, at this point, gave them what? Clear instructions. You guys move around what? Seven times. Don't do anything. They were not moving, you know, carrying saw or anything to do things. But what? There was somebody initiated that process, which is who? Which is God. So, in as much as it would have been their natural desire to actually go get into Jericho, but the most important thing was what? It was God's idea. Do you understand? And then God told them, look, now move around seven times. It didn't make any sense. And then they moved around seven times, and then he said, the last time you should do what? You should shout. Now, for us to understand the wall of Jericho very well, the Bible says after they shouted, what happened? The wall fell what? Fell down flat. It's not that flat here. Look, Jericho, the wall of Jericho was like a cube. Do you understand? The same size height and what? And, um, and um, wheat or length, whichever way you want to call it. And so, if you say Jericho fell down flat, it means what would happen? This is going to what? Fall this way. But when they did that, the wall actually sunk into the deep. Or probably shattered. But if it shattered, probably it would have injured them. And then we'll, we'll see a very, another physical response you know, in the physical. Moses, God told him to what? To stretch for the his rod, and what happened? The sea parted. So, what is the point here? It's not to say that, okay, Funto looked at this thing, move, and it did not move. We must understand that who is initiating the process of movement here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who is, because if God spoke to her and said that this thing is going to move, it's going to move. Now, let me give you an example. That is why we see people, maybe somebody in an accident scene or something, and then... You know, the vehicle is moving. And so, have you heard testimonies like that? Someone like, it was as though God carried the car out of that way, out of the place. I don't know how I survived this accident. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the supernatural still moves in the physical. Look, we, when, what do we call supernatural? That is beyond the natural. Something beyond the natural. And we are so, look, go back to that Hebrews 11 again, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3. He says, through faith, we understand that the words, what we see physically, was what? We are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do what? Which do appear. So, God created the word by what? By spoken word. Let there be light and there was light. Everything. And he has given us this same structure, this same system. to so actually what? Begin to speak. But then, we don't just speak things. We speak what we've heard him say. And so this is what I'm going to explain to us today quickly because of time. So let us go to, um, so I said, faith cascade is what? It's a stream of faith or how, you know, the flow of faith. And the um, dictionary definition of a cascade, it says it's uh, of water pour downwards rapidly and in large quantities. So we already read Hebrews 11 verse um, 22 to 24. Now, the first thing I want us to know is faith always begins with God. 
Faith always begins with God. Last time when we defined faith, we said faith is what? is a spiritual force or system that brings what? The realities of heaven where? On earth. That brings the realities of heaven here on earth. The Bible says that we be done in earth as it was. As it is what? In heaven. So, faith always begins with God. I've said this so many times. The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It says, Jesus Christ, the what? The author and the finisher of what? Our faith. So, if he has started it, he's always going to finish it. As long as we continue with him. So, um, the next thing to know about faith is faith is then released to us by God's word. Directly to you. Now, um, let's go to Hebrews not Hebrews, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Or Romans 10, 17. Go to 10. Romans 10, 17. The Bible says, So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Now I want us to see it this way. Are you there? So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. So the mistake a lot of people do is... Um, they get their Bible and they're like, I want to receive faith. It is good, but if you come literally like that, you've, you've broken the principle. Because we say faith cometh by what? Hearing. For you to hear something, there is what? A sound. Do you understand what I'm saying? There must be a sound. And hearing by what? The word of God. So the word must what be spoken. And the word, who is speaking the word here yeah, to us? God is speaking the word. True spirit. I explained all of that last week. So this is the realm we're talking about. So you can actually be on your own reading the Bible. You are either what reading or listening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or I pray you get that in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible says that what? The letter killeth, but the what? The spirit gives life. So you can actually be looking at the letter but not getting faith. It might be a storybook to you. Do you get what I'm saying? So, when someone's like, go to the word of God, go to the word of God, they are correct, but if they, they, are, if they don't tell you to listen to what he will say to you in his word, then it is wrong. That is why we say faith is what? Is, it comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word from God. That is how the original Greek actually puts it. We must hear God's word. So, I can, you know, right now, the easiest way is, you know, of getting faith is coming to church, really. Because now we're hearing the word of God. And faith is being released. But even on your own, personally, you can get a word from God. I pray to God, maybe in the, book, in the, month, in the month of November, I would go to the, into this topic again, hearing God's voice. Because every believer should actually hear God's voice clearly. Do you understand? It's, so, it's our right. Tell your neighbor, it's my right to hear from God. It's your right. As a child of God, you're supposed to hear your father's voice. The Bible says, my sheep do what? They hear my voice. So we must hear his voice. But now the agency in which this word is released is through our spirit. So it's not, now what are we doing? We've separated the physical man now. Because the physical man is only going to see. It can actually hear, but it's not receiving from God. That is why James said that what? He said, do not be hearers of the word only, but what? Be ye doers of the word. So you can actually, what will cause you to do the word of God is when you've actually received it in your spirit. And it has consumed you. I, I pray, you know, with time we'll be able to, you know, break all of this calmly and calmly and calmly until we, until we get it. So, hearing from God is important. Hearing from God. We should hear from God. So, when we come, when you're, you're, your personal time with God, you're reading the Bible, you're actually, you're like, Holy Spirit, help me. Because that's the agency. The spirit begins to bear witness with your own spirit that this, you know, this word is for you. This is, what, this is God's, God's word to you. So when a situation, situation looks impossible and God, you just open the scripture and go like, you know, I'm going to do it for you. And like, really? And then, you know, so that is when faith has actually begun. Faith is not, you know, you can see somebody do something you like and then you're like, oh, now I want to faith to have it. No, that's not faith in God at all. That's, you know, maybe all this, you know, human positivity, thinking, and whatever people do. And it's trial and error, you know, they, it's up, it might happen, it might not happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, you, there's a lot of prob probability, there is no force backing that. 
So, all you've done is what? You've limited yourself. You're not operating by what? By just the physical and the soul realm of things. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then, when the supernatural comes into the scene, then we begin to see the mountains move. The things that are actually impossible. And God, you know, God's flex is actually, you know, it's the natural for God is the impossible for man. Do you get what I'm saying? Because as, you know, the Bible says, as the heavens is what is as high from the earth, so as what is ways far from our own ways. As his thoughts, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So there is a, and the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of it is what is destruction. So what, so men could actually be moving in this direction. God is like, come this way. This is the way. So what seem impossible with men, the Bible says with God, it is what? It is possible. So, and this is how God actually operates. It's only God, you know, it's only, you know, the way of God, you hear that 300 men face an army of, you know, I know you've read, um, what's the name of that uh, movie again? Is it 300 or what's the name of the movie? That's, is it 300? Huh? I've, I've never watched it before. You know, 300 won how many people? Hundreds of thousands. And then somebody's like, that is fiction, right? You know, like this imagination. I said, somebody, I heard, one, I pray I remember the Gen Z word. They said, the only way to, the only Solulu is to be in Delulu. And I was like, wow. I was like, hey man, is, is, how many of us know that statement? Yeah, ah, Delulu is the Solulu. Ah, this one is new one again. But it's the same thing. So that's, the solution is just keep being delusional, right? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, um, but in God, this is not about delu de delusion or delusion. We're talking about something that would actually work. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so even there are things we say in faith that someone like, oh, that's delusion. This situation is impossible. Do you understand? And I love that word. The only solution is to be what? Delusion. In the physical. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the physical man, I've given Gen Z he more help now to just go out and say like, you know, just. So, your body, to you, you know, somebody's like, you've been delusional right now. This is impossible. But because it has been revealed to you, you know that what? It is actually possible. But now I'm not telling you to go around shouting, otherwise you'll continue to be in physical delusion. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, this is what you want to do. So that, let me give you an example of delusion a lot of students do. One month to exam, you've not opened the material. Three weeks to the exam, you've not opened the material. Now, finally, a week before that exam, you opened the material. First night, you went one hour or so. You, you have, out of how many topics? Or have, okay, you could do by exam question. So out of 150 exam questions, you finish five for one hour. And then you like the next day. And then you tell yourself that I know myself very well. I'm a pressure reader. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a pressure reader. Three days, I know. And then maybe you, you get to five days before the exam. Like, don't worry, I know. Like, relax. I let me not die with this exam. Then finally, two days before the exam, it now starts. You are, you, are, you are seated. And then the next thing, let me tell you the next thing that begins to happen. You're just going through the... You are, you're look, you are looking, but it's not entering. Can anybody relate here? Okay, we have good students here. Amen. So, you are opening... The, so you look at the question, you, just, you are now glancing through. You are moving forward. And then when you get to maybe out of 150, you get to now 128. And then somebody asks you a question in question 50. You're like, he did that material. <laughs> and can anybody relate here? Amen. All right. So we are, it looks like this side, they are good students. They always study five months before. Amen. And then you get to the, the worst thing that can happen to you is getting to an exam where you're like, I saw this question Oh, yeah, bring the answer. I actually saw this question. Do you understand? Has it happened to anybody before? I saw the question. Okay, good students. Amen. Two of this is producing giants here. Amen. So it looks like it's only me that can relate to what I'm saying. Amen. And then you begin to ask God for mercy. Lord, have mercy. And then you begin to pray. Father, let the teacher not concentrate so much on question two. Father, I know question one and four very well. When we get there, and then you get like, sir, sir, can I start with four? <laughs> Just... And like, so you want to say the ones you know very well. And then God, if God wants to punish you, the teacher knows starts normal. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, is, faith is not delusion. But to the physical man, it's actually delusion. Uh, when Jesus Christ was going to... I'm, I'm still talking about 
operating in the spirit yet seeing physical results, getting that flow. Jesus Christ was going to feed 5,000 people and said that, look, I've been preaching for three days here. These guys should be hungry. They, as a matter of fact, the word of God was so sweet that they forgot they were hungry. Because normal human being, if they are hungry, they will start to leave. Do you understand? Some people cannot even, like, two hours sermon, they are already restless. They will stand up. They will go to toilet. They are not going to do anything in toilet, though. They will just enter toilets, wash hands, come out. Say, ah, they have not finished. You know, a lot of... Can anybody relate here? Oh, okay, one person can relate here. It's like, two of these people, they love the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So these people, they were eating the word of God. They forgot they were hungry by first fasting. And then it was Jesus Christ who now pitied pity them like, ah, let us feed these guys. And then these disciples were like, uh, one of them said that even if we call the old bakery in town, they will not be able to feed these people. There are so many. And then Jesus Christ was like, he already knew what he was going to do. And then said, there's somebody here with five loaves and two fishes. And then he brought it and he gave thanks to, to God. And then he started sharing it. He kept sharing it was not finishing. He kept sharing it was not finishing. So look, um, faith is real. Faith is, faith is real. Faith is real. Like there's a, and we should get to this point. Like I, I told you, it's mastery of the unseen. There is something. Now let's do something. Um, okay, David, the both of you come. Let us do something right now. Let, we're going to do something right now. Um, you guys are angels. The both of you are angels here. You stay here, stay here. You're not bad angels. Good angels. Amen. And then, now, let us assume, pretend, like you cannot see them. Just pretend like you can't see them. Now, both of you move this thing forward. Pretend, pretend. And wait, wait, before you move it forward, now I've engaged all my angels, and I'm like, in the name of Jesus, move. Begin to move now. In the, in the name of Jesus, move. In the name of Jesus, move. Move, Lord. Move it, Lord. And so you keep praying in faith. No, there is something you can see that others can't actually see. And when you keep engaging it, it's actually moving. And people are asking you, are you actually doing it? But because you've come to a place of mastery. And then tomorrow, it comes again. In the name of Jesus, this board, move forward. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you, move. I speak to you, move. I speak to you, move. What has happened? I've mastered my faith now. I know when, aha, this one is when I'm moving it. Amen. Just, do you understand? I've mastered my faith. I know it would work. So this is what, move it back again. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what I've done is mastery. As simple, you can sit down. Thank you very much. As simple as this thing I've shown to you is, this is how faith actually operates. The Bible says he shall give his angels, what? Charge over you. He shall give his angels charge over you. And these things, every day, there are angels. The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. It says, are angels not ministering spirits to minister to what? To those who have the heirs of salvation. So, faith can be mastered. Faith is potent. Faith is active. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's transformed. So, let us go to the next thing. Um, I said you must receive a word from God. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. TWC, I know we love scriptures a lot. Right? Amen. So, a couple of scriptures for this. I already spoke about Romans 10, 17. Um, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 12, 2. It says, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. On that scripture, um, a couple of scriptures, but let me just skip. The next thing to do is to believe in your heart. God has said it. Do you believe? What, like, you know, I think a lot of people, this is where they have a lot of, they have problem. Um, because getting one to believe is such a struggle. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when God speaks to you, especially if you are so natural, it will be difficult for you to receive the things of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you are so natural. Look, let me tell you, if you can break this point of belief, you will get results. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there are people, it says, go back to that um, um, Mark chapter 11, verse, go to 23 now. 
believing, uh, believing is work. It should be easy, but you know, believing it's easier when you have deeper relationship with God. D- did you get what I just said? Because when you are relating with Him as a father, you easily, you know, when you are a child, you easily believe what your father will tell you. Do you understand? You know, there are still people who, there are little girls who believe, you know, their mom told them that if a boy touches you, you will get pregnant. How many of us remember such, or you know about such before? Do you understand? And the girl will believe it. If a man wants to say, ah, and begin to cry, ah, and maybe, hey, I don't want to get pregnant. Do you understand? And imagine a child asks you a very difficult question right now. So, you know, like a baby, like, how, how do we make babies? Or how, you know, how did they make... And then you hear parents say that you fell from heaven or something. And that child will believe it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, what creates unbelief in children? Exposure. Do you understand what I'm saying? You've been exposed to what? To new, another information. And this was what happened in the beginning. Oh, it's flowing right now. When... Keep the scripture here. Now, let me tell you when man started unbelief. When unbelief entered the world. It was when what? The fall of man. It's the Bible, um, when they took the fruit, it said that it will, it will be what? It's a fruit of what? Of good and evil. Their eyes were now what? Open to a realm. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was now open to what? To the physical realm. So instantly they saw they were what? They were naked. Do you understand what I'm saying? Instantly, they saw their nakedness. And so, the reason why many people are not believing is because they are not yet broken. They are still, you know, they they are still, they are very stiff based on what? What they can see with their eyes every time. So, even when God says this, Like Jesus Christ said he wanted to feed everybody. What disciples already said it was impossible. But guess what? It's still when Jesus Christ started feeding, it was still through their hands. So, this is the problem. To believe, like when when you don't believe the things of God, it shows that you are far away from him. And that is why we always encourage relationship with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? We encourage relationship. Get closer to God. Now, let me... Explain to us something. Um, you can still keep... Okay, let me just read this scripture and then I'll move to the next verse. It says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou what? Remove and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not what? Doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to what? To pass. So you can see how important belief is. Go to 24. 24 of the same Mark. It says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you what? You shall have them. So believing, believing here, yeah, we're talking about believing in your heart. Like believing. It's hard work, but it's re- always hard work when you are far from him, when your relationship with him is not very solid. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now let us look at um, Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews. I'll read chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. It says, And to whom swear ye that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that what? Believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter the rest. And then the Bible actually explained, I think um, preceding verse to this in uh, the same Hebrews chapter 3. He said that, guess what? Do you know the people who could not enter into Canaan? Do you know the people who died in the wilderness? Should I tell you the people who died? In, most people who died in the wilderness. It's in Hebrews. It was those people, most of the people who left Egypt, they were exposed to Egypt. So they still taught Egypt. And so it was difficult for them to enter. It took another generation that was born in the wilderness that didn't see Egypt. Do you understand what I'm saying? That didn't have an idea of Egypt for them to believe. So, the reason why they spent longer time in the wilderness was because of what? Their unbelief. 
So, and it was so bad that in the wilderness, they saw a lot of miracles, yet they were still in unbelief. So, the miracles they saw was as a result of mercy, not because of belief. And God wanted what? He wanted the remnants to get into what? Into the promised land. To get into rest. That was the people he wanted. Because he saw these people, they were like babies. You know, God delivered them. Look, before even Moses took them into the wilderness, they saw a lot of miraculous signs and wonders. Do you understand what I'm saying? They saw with their own eyes. But immediately they entered the wilderness, just before the Red Sea, they started shouting, ah, Moses, is it not better for us to die in Egypt than for us to die here? They were still thinking of Egypt. Even the reason why God did not let them to go through the land of the Philistines immediately, God said that, ah, these ones, if they see war today, they will run back to Egypt and it will be difficult for them to ever enter wilderness to start journey back to the promised land again. And so the problem with faith is always with what? It's unbelief. And this unbelief is as a result of what? Our hearts. Our hearts are not soft with God. It's still very hard. When I, you know, we have a lot of excuses why you, we should not get healed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even like, you know, you have a lot of excuses. Ah, the doctor said this. Ah, this thing, how can this? If it's, somebody said that, if it's headache, I know headache can live within 24 hours. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you see, a scar, injury like this, and like, uh-uh, how can this thing go now, now? Science and everything, our exposure has told us that what? There is a process for this to go. There are some things that are actually irreversible. So, our exposure, though good, but now we've believed so much in what? In the power of our exposure more than the power of God. Are we together? Uh, amen. Are we together? So, this is a problem. Believe. I, I, it's, I don't know why I'm spending so much time with believing, but really, if you've not believed in your heart, you've not started faith. Because God can speak, but you don't believe. They didn't get into the promised land because God spoke. They got in because they believed. Do you understand? God is always speaking. People are always hearing. Between every prophecy and its what? Its uh, realization or its manifestation is what man's cooperation. But you only start cooperating when you what? When you believe. So your bearing fruit is tied down to your what? Tied down to your belief. It was important for Abraham to believe. Should I tell you? I know many of us, we can begin to judge Abraham and say that all. Oh, but we can even judge Sarah and everything. Do you know they believed? That, look, that man was very old was really old. And they believed that if this man, the both of them agreed together, okay, go and lay, lie down with what we made. They believe he will still produce something. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, there was a sense of belief. Though she was not believing in her own self. Because of course the sensual word, what she has seen, that look this is not menopause again. Like this is menostop. It's like it is over. It's impossible. This one is irreversible. It's impossible. And that is as a result of what? The exposure. There's nothing bad with exposure, but we must come to a point whereby, you know, we're very simple in our hearts. And that is when God begins to walk. In short, God has been walking. He wants, but for us to see the walkings of God in our lives, we must believe. We must believe. Like Nicodemus, Jesus Christ, add, let us go to John 3. You're going to see something. Let's start from verse 3. John 3 will try to be fast with this. And the main thing was still unbelief. John chapter 3, very popular scripture of the Bible. It's, um, go to verse 3. It's, okay, 2. Go to 2. Go to 2. It says, the same came, that is that same man called Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come that has come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with what? Except God be with him. Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be what? Born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. And now look at the response of this innocent man. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into what? His mother's womb and be what? Be born. Can you see what has happened here? God used a terminology in the physical world that was contradicted to what the man knew already. Do you understand? He said, 
except a man be born again. And the man was like, how can a man like me go into my mother's womb? So he was judging that statement based on what he knew in the physical. Do you understand? Are we together? That was his basis of judgment. And now, Jesus Christ, verse 5, he says, that which is, you've jumped to 6. Jesus answered verily, Jesus answered, verily I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into what? The kingdom. So Jesus Christ was not saying that, look, this bet here is what? A spiritual bet. And then go to verse 6. That which is born of what? Flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Is spirit. Now, jump to 14. And you're going to see how Jesus Christ began to talk about the importance of belief that to be born of this spirit right now, there was need for you to believe. Now, he says, and as Moses, now Jesus Christ had to come down to his level because he knew this man was a man, or a teacher of what? Of the law. Remember, he had to now, because when we talk about the law, we're talking about Moses. And he had to come to his level for, so that this man would finally get it. And say that, look, look at the process. He told him that, look, the children of Israel actually had faith before. There was a system of faith that was in operation. In the wilderness, when snakes were biting people, when God sent um, snakes, God then, uh, uh, the people were not complaining, and then Moses pleaded for mercy. And God like, okay, now the solution here is create what? Create um, a, um, a snake and put it on a pole. Anytime the people look after a bite, what would happen? They would be healed. And then they did that, and they saw it. And Jesus Christ was like, now, for you to be born of the Spirit, you also need this belief system. Am I together? Are we together? And that, now, it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be what? Be lifted up, verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but what? Have eternal life. Now, verse 16, that we all know so much. Can we quote it together? For God so what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what? Believeth in him should not perish but what? Have everlasting life. So, how many of us believe in Jesus here as the son of God that he died and he, uh, that he died, he was buried and he rose on the third day? How many of us believe that? Now, how many of us believe we have eternal life? Glory be, God, be to God. Now we have more people. How many of us remember at the beginning of this month I asked and few hands were up. It shows that you guys are now operating in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. This is good testimony. Glory be to God. So this is a structure. Whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So believe in because there are people who don't believe. They've heard. They've seen in the scripture. In short, people have sweated. They've seen miracles happen. But getting to this belief, what God has said to them is always very difficult. Amen. Are we together? So believing is important. But the easiest way to believe is when you are in a relationship with him and you are childlike in that relationship. Anything he says, you know it's final. Oh, this is what God is saying. I'm going to do it. And remember last week I said faith faith will tell you to do things that are foolish. Remember? And only a child will just, have you joked with a child before? And then maybe you try to joke and the child believes it's like, ah, it's a joke and the child is, you are shocked that the child actually believed in it. Has anybody done that before? You're shocked like, ah, hey. And then you now feel so bad and like, ah, I'm, not, I'm never going to joke around this child again because this child believes in everything I say. Except some of you that were stubborn, they say don't touch that thing. That's when you want to. That's the one you want to touch. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you must be so childlike with God for you to really believe the things of God, because then, because God will tell you to do things like those servants. I don't. Uh, that is in the wedding in Canaan. Those guys are actually my. They are my best guys. I know people have done a lot of things in the Bible, but when it comes to faith, I love the story of those guys so much. Because the mother of Jesus Christ told them that anything he asked you to do, just what? Just do it. And then, they did not argue. They were just doing. Anything he said, they were, ah, okay. He said, now, take from that water. Go and give to what? To the, ma the, the chief of the ceremony, the governor of the ceremony. And they just moved. Childlike. Very childlike. They did not say, ah, bros. Ah, ah. 
They did not, you know, many of us, because of everything we know, begin to argue. Begin to argue. He said, that job you are applying for, though you don't qualify for it, you're going to get it. And then you're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, and they will ask me CV, they will ask me this and everything. You begin to think a lot of things. And God, who has gone ahead of you? Has he made it open for you already? And then you are arguing and then you go in front. And that is why some people, they eventually go and they get results. When they get the results, they can't reproduce those same results again. Like they can't reproduce because they actually got from God, but they move in partial obedience. But you know, the Bible makes it clear that even partial obedience is still disobedience. But God, by his mercy, he just, you know, brought that into effect. So, in our believing, we must believe completely. Believe. He said, do not doubt in your heart. Stop doubting. Tell your neighbor, stop doubting. You doubt too much. Stop doubting. Look, I'm saying you doubt too much. Some people like, I mean, I don't used to doubt too much. You doubt too much. You doubt a lot. Stop doubting. The plans God has for you, they are of good and not of evil. He says that those, oh my God, go to the book of Mark's gospel. This is not the plan. A lot of scriptures regarding belief is coming out. Mark's gospel chapter 16. Let us read verse 15. We read from verse 15 to 20. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into what? All the word and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is what? Baptized shall be what? Saved. It says, but he that believeth not shall what? Be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. So the signs follow those who believe. The signs would always follow those who believe. It says that what? In my name, they shall cast out devils. How many of us believe? Oh, ah, you heard devil, you don't believe again? Amen. How many of us believe? We believe in God. How many of us believe that the greater one lives in us? Oh, hallelujah. How many of us can look at the devil in his eyes and say, get out of here? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, some people drop and they are scared of devil. Amen. <laughs> it's fine. That's why we're in the school of faith. So you increase. Because we're supposed to increase. There are some. Jesus Christ said that, they, you know, when Jesus Christ returned and then he saw the disciples, they were struggling to cast out demon out of a, um, you know, a boy, a lunatic boy. And then he, they struggled in the name of Jesus, come out, and it was not coming out. And Jesus Christ stepped into the scene and he said that what? Out! And it left. And then the marvel is like, ah, what happened? We were trying, how come we did not succeed? And he said that, ah, because of your faith. He immediately said, because of your faith. Ah, but they have had faith since. He said, oh, your faith is little. This one, however, go ahead not except by what? Prayer and by fasting. So there is a prayer and fasting we give ourselves to that our faith actually increases. Because faith is to increase. He said, all year of what? Little faith. He says in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 20, building your most holy faith, praying in the what? In the Holy Ghost. So faith is to be built. For you right now, you can pray on the sick, that has headache and they recover. Glory be to God. Keep practicing that. Tomorrow is going to be appendicitis. On that day is going to be cancer. You don't arrive like that, you know, instantly. You keep increasing. You keep increasing. There was a man called John G. Lake. I think it was um, outbreak of, I think, is it bubonic plague or some, uh, I think bubonic plague in the, in the country of South Africa so many years ago. And then it was a national pandemic. Every pandemic throughout the country of South Africa. And then as a missionary in that country there, he told them that they should bring the sick. People were running away. What people were running away from, this man was running towards. And then he started laying his hands on every sick and they were recovering. And then he, he, faith grew so much in him, he got so angry. He told them, now bring, like, bring sample of that virus to me. Bring it. They placed it in his hand and then he gave them back the sample. They checked it in the microscope. It, had, it died. There are levels. Some of you, you had COVID like this. Hey, God, cover me and my family in Jesus' name. That's where your faith has reached you. Amen. You see, somebody will just cough in the plane. Hey, hey, Lord, let it not touch me. That is your level of faith. It's fine. Amen. I'm not going to criticize that. But there's a level you come to. And then you're like, who has COVID in this place? Amen. There's a man of God who, one time, I will not call his name. And then he's like, if you are a witch, yeah, come out. And witches came out. Yeah, 
He said, you're a witch. Yeah, come on. Some of you, you don't want to detect witch. I beg. If you're a witch, run away from my life. <laughs> Amen. You know, this same man of God, he, one day, he was, you know, he, he was ministering in church and then um, he, he did the same question. If you're a witch, come out. And he came and said that. He now decided to ask the witch. How come you came here? He said, ah, no, the spirit that is possessing me is outside. So after the service, when I go, he said, it cannot come in here. I cannot come here. So he went further to ask. He said, so what happens on the highway? Because he, he said, he asked that which. So what is your own job? He said, ah, we, we are, our own is highway. We suck blood or we cause accident on the road. He said, ah, so what happens when some of us are passing? He said, ah, we run away so that you carry your problem and go. And then the ones who we can touch, we come back for them. It's revelation or something. I've said this before that there are two types of Christians, you know, just to separate it here, you know, levels in Christianity. We have beautiful mothers who always pray prayers like this. I love my mom for that. Now she's improving in our revelation of this. Amen. You know, but I, I'm not sure she's going to still pray such prayer for her children. Anyways, she's still going to pray the old one. Like, Father, every vehicle marked for destruction today. May my children not enter it in Jesus' name. Is it a good prayer? It's not a good prayer. Why is it not a good prayer? Tell us. Frank is a generous guy. Amen. He's protecting every. He wants to protect everybody. I know you go, God will send you to trenches to heal the sick medically, even for free in Jesus' name. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you're not thinking of everybody. Ah, uh, oh, it's a good prayer, but you will not pray. You you will pray that same prayer. Ah, uh, <laughs> so it's a good prayer, by the way. There's nothing bad with that prayer, in as much as there's you know kind of sentiment. But it's a good prayer. You just want to protect your children. He says, "I and the what children God has given me, they are for what." Is it a bad prayer? It's not a bad prayer. My children for sense of what concern me, you know, like I uh, my children and then other children are for sense of ah, is the level I can believe for. So let me continue like that. So it's a good prayer. But one can move to a place of revelation and say that, Father, any vehicle marked for destruction today, let me enter. Is it a good prayer? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like any vehicle marked for destruction today. Now, I'm not telling you to go and do prayers out of intellectual knowledge, oh, and let it be a revelational thing. You have, you've gotten to the place you've gotten there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, I say, any vehicle marked for destruction, destruction, let me enter. And then this is out of a revelation of, I know if I enter this vehicle, nothing is going to happen. I can't be here and there'll be destruction. Now, I'm not telling you now to see a vehicle that is about to die. The tire is 40. It's moving boom, 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 like this. Because I'm here, nothing will happen. Enter. Let's go. Uh, that one is foolishness. Example. When the, um, the devil asked Jesus Christ to jump, that after all, in the book of Psalm 91, he shall give what his angel charge over you. Jesus Christ, what was his response? Don't tempt God. That shall not tempt the Lord your God. I'm not saying see problem. I say, ah, let us enter inside. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There, it was a faith situation. That one was not... Because some of you read the Bible and say, where's fire? Ah, if I enter the fire, I will not burn. You burn, you roast. Amen. <laughs> Do you understand? So you should be able to differentiate, you know, uh, human foolishness. Do you understand? With faith. But faith will do, make you do things that are foolish. And it's always initiated by who? By God. Do you understand? And when you get to that level, you know you've gotten to that level. I gave an example one time. Let me see what's the time. Time has gone. Yay. It looks like, they, but I have one sweet point I wanted to drop. Should I drop it? Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, give one testimony. I hardly give testimonies. Uh, these last two weeks, I was like, let me not be giving testimonies. But let me give one particular testimony. Uh, this was, I uh, come to Samara. Um, a lot of situations actually happened um, in that camp. I, Samara is far away. And, uh, I, how, do, how did you get to Kusk? Did we travel together? We traveled from Moscow together uh, to Samara. How did we get to Kusk? Did you you use train, right? Did I use train or I flew to Moscow? 
Okay, I use train. So the both of us, yeah, we use train. We're in the taxi together, yes. So we got to uh, Moscow and then after traveling by train and then I got to Samara. We flew to Samara, everything, getting there. And then the night I got there, that was the day that God forgive them in this school. Called me that I should come back because of one, I should come and sign one signature. Like, I was like, I've traveled. They said, no, 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 you have to come tomorrow. I'm like, tomorrow? They said, come tomorrow. Okay, I can use this one. They said, come tomorrow. And then I just off the phone and everything. So the following day was the first night of camp. We were going to, and they said, if you don't come tomorrow, there's going to be a fine of one million rubies. A, I just, and it's going to be so terrible. And then I just, that day I booked tickets. Bam, 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 bam. I flew uh, tickets. That, that ticket, two tickets. I had not booked even coming back. Two tickets just because, uh, just Samara and then Samara to Kusk. In which case, the total was, the total was 30,000 rubles. Boom, like that. You can reduce the mic a little bit. And then I arrived in Moscow early in the morning because I flew early in the morning. You just reduce a little bit. Early in the morning, and then I got to... I'm, we're getting somewhere with this. I'm just giving you a story, like, you know, just to enjoy a story. Amen. And then we got to... It's still quite loud. Reduce it a little bit. And then we got to Moscow. I was at the airport. Flight was going to take uh, in two hours' time. Then they shifted it. Time was going. And then they said they, they canceled the flight. I was like, I have to be in, because this was early in the morning. This was like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. I checked train. I could not meet anyone. So I had to take a taxi. Boom, I begged the taxi guy, please, can we get to Kus? The guy just, ah, he liked that kind of work. He just took advantage, say 15K. On this spot, he just said 15K. I said, no worry, no worry, let's enter. So we entered. Boom, we got to Kusk, and the thing pained me, because it was just one signature. I just, like this 45K has gone. Ah, the team pay me. I said, no problem. And then I booked another flight from Kursk to Moscow. I got to Moscow, got to the airport there. And then I was pained because I even missed my session. We're getting somewhere, everybody. And then I was at the airport. I was just like, just tired. I've been traveling, spending time with God. And then uh, it was not time for us to fly. We got into our plane. We're in that plane like this. A plane that is supposed to take off has not taken off. We're inside the plane. We went out like this. And then the next thing we heard, it was about to take off. The next thing we heard, like, boom, like this. Everything, the whole lights in the plane off. Ah, what happened? And then we waited in the plane. Later, the engine came up again. And then they told us, let us come down. We said, what happened? They said, the engine spoiled. Ah, what's about to, whoo, like this. It spoiled. And when people were shocked. So when we got to the airport, me, I, I had to still travel. And the next thing we saw, I think like 70% of the passengers said, they, are, they brought me a plane. They said, lie, lie here. They are not traveling again. They, they saw their life before them. They said, they are not traveling. They are not flying. They are not going. Let the plane go. I was my own. I entered. I cannot die. And I landed. Amen. So the thing is, you know, you, it depends on what you believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying people who have died by plane crash, they are sinners or they are bad. The Bible says, be it unto you according to what? Your faith. I believe I cannot die like a chicken. I cannot die like It's what I believe so much. So, and don't come and judge my belief with your belief. It's my belief. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't tell me that, like, my mentor by the grace of God, my teacher of blessed memories, he died by, by a plane crash. I'm not saying uh, he, he achieved a lot in life, but I came to a place whereby I cannot die like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't die like that. So I'm not saying people who tragedy has happened to, they don't have faith or anything. It depends on what you believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? It depends on what you believe, what you've seen and you believe in your heart. Someone is like, ah, natural disaster. If you believe it can consume you, it can consume you. Last night I was in the office. Maybe some of you were in deep sleep and there. Boom, 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 everywhere. And then I opened my window and like, hey, you know, if you look at this thing, there's free space. You, you don't get what I'm saying. Like, there's no building blocking <laughs> blocking the office. So if anything is going to come like this, I say, come on, get out of there like this. And then I look at my back like this. Window is open. <laughs> like, direct, if anything, just, I say, and then I, maybe, did anybody hear things at night? Uh, uh, like, 
boom, boom, like till 1 a.m. I don't know why they've not released the final news or anything. Like till 1 a.m. I was like, it was loud. There was one I saw, bar light. When I opened a letter, I said, don't worry, relax. Continue in the word of God. It depends. Some of you, you have been looking for basements by now. It's just like, <laughs> to run to. Or be shouting blood of Jesus. Disturbing blood. Amen. Your blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Blood. I know what I can. I know what I believe. So, let us go to the last point. Not, not the last point, but, you know, uh, the last point for today because I wanted to give us um, this very important point. So now, when you believe, be, you believed in your heart, if you do this alone, then I want to tell you something that would determine, you know, let me, I want to teach you how to maximize the belief. You've received that word, you believe it, but there is an ingredient that determines how much you're going to get out of it. Let me put it this way. There's a multiplying factor. There's something that if you have it in one, it multiplies times one, you get that result. If you have it in two, you multiply, you get it double. If you have it in three, you multiply, it's going to give you what times three of the results. And this one is something that we on our own, it's not God that do it for us, it's we. Who have to engage. Remember, the sequence we started with is what? We started with faith begins with God, and then we receive that word from God. We are participating with God. The next one now is believing in our heart. You know, you can actually ask God to even actually help your unbelief, by the way, and who is going to help your unbelief. He can still support, but there is something. Now, we are going to go into a place of action now. Like, not even action, like your own, uh, what do you call it, response to things. Next week, by God's grace, miracle service, I'm going to talk about um, you know, the importance of declaration and actions, um, expectation. I'm going to talk about all of that. But there is something in the soul realm. Because the other things you do in the physical. Remember last week I told us man is spirit, he has a soul and he does what? He lives in a body. But there is something in the soul area. And I said the, um, the, um, the constraint of the soul is what? I said what? It houses your what? Your mind, your emotions and your what? Oh, come on, guys. And your will. Your, you guys have forgotten already. Your, it houses your what? Your mind, your what? Will, and your what? And, and your emotions. Amen. So, now, and I said functions of the mind are what? Oh, TWC. Uh, reasoning, learning, understanding, and imagination, you got that last one wrong. Amen. And imagination. Now, it is important. Uh, so, the soul, the mind, this is where you have to engage in. And how do you do this? What do you do at this point? You help your understanding. You believe in this, and now you develop it further to understand that thing God has given to you. You believe it quite all right, but you understand it more. The level of your understanding of what God has said to you will determine the amount that will come to you. Go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. Matthew 13, 23. And you're going to see, this is Jesus Christ. He was giving a story. He said that, look, this is about the par- he gave the parable of the sower, how, you know, um, when you saw some, what happened, some fell by the roadside and everything, he was given all of that. And then, verse 23, he says, remember, before this, he says that that seed is what? Is the word of God. Remember, are we together? How many of us know the story so that we don't take a lot of time? So that that seed is the word of God. He says, but he that received that seed, received seed into what? The ground. Is he that what? Yeared the word and what? And uh, understanded it. Understanding is in level. Do you understand what? Do you get what I'm saying? Understanding is in levels. We understand things in different levels. Amen. Are we together? We understand it. It says, now, look at it. The next part. Which also beareth fruit, fruit and bringeth what? Fought some. What? An hundredfold. Some 60, some 30. So, what determines if you're going to get 30 or 60 or 100 is your what? Is your understanding. So, right now, I believe God wants to heal me. I believe it in my heart. I believe it so much in my heart. I believe God said he's going to heal me. But let me tell you, your understanding, you can, 
uh, and I'm going to tell us how to produce this understanding. Your understanding will determine if it's going to be what? If it's going to happen slowly or instant. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it's going to, you know, slowly. Now, you can, or you can keep building understanding. As a matter of fact, understanding is to be built every day. Waiting for the word of God to be released. I'm going to explain. We are together. Amen. Remember, it's in the soul realm. Understanding. So, you understand something. It says, he that what? He that received the seed, which is what? The word of God. Is he that what? Heareth the word and what? Understanded it. So, there was understanding. And then the word came. And because of that, so a farmer can understand but lack seed. You can understand farming but you're lacking seed. Do you get what I'm saying? In, you can have seed and not even have fruit. And not bear fruit. You can actually have seed and produce little results. You can have seed and bear fruit all season, all year round. And you can have seed and only bear fruit in season. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, let me explain to you. In agriculture, um, we plant by what? By season, right? Naturally. But now, man's understanding has brought him to a point where what? He can actually plant any time of the year. Do you understand what I'm saying? In the Middle East, for example, Israel, the climate there, the climatic condition there is not favorable to a lot of plants. But because of their understanding, they are what? They are planting and they are what? They are harvesting. Let me give you another example again. Um, all through the year in Russia, you can go to what? You can go to the supermarket and you'll find what? Orange. Every year. But people who lack understanding of preservation and everything, what would happen? You only, orange will only be what? A seasonal thing. Do you, are we together? Are we flowing together? Uh, do you understand? What now, let me tell you something. Somebody can come to church believing God for something and it's like, I'm going to believe, I'm going to get something from God today. That every time I come to church, I'll get something. And somebody's own understanding is that only when there is special program, I'll get from God. Do you understand? Or only when this man of God comes, I'll get from God. That's his understanding. That is why he cannot bear fruit what all season. Are we flowing together? Like you people are looking a little bit, you know. Um, it's, understanding is important. God has said something. That is why people actually have received from God, but they are lacking in understanding. And their results can only tell the level of understanding of things. Understanding is important. And how do we understand? It's by meditation. Psalms 119, I'll read from verse 97. Psalms 119, amen. Amen. Don't, don't worry, I'll be done shortly. Psalm 119, I'll read from verse 97. And then later I'll go to Joshua 1.8. The Bible says, oh, how I love thy law. My meditation, all what? All the day. Thou, through thy commandment, are you there already so that the people can follow, sorry? Psalm 119. Because I want everybody to look and follow. It says, oh, how I love thy law. It is what? My meditation, all what? All the day. This is you having God's word all day. The law here is, oh, how I love your word. It is my meditation every day. When we tell everybody to read the Bible every day, it's so that you understand God and understand the way, his ways. What are you doing here? You are what? You are rinsing your mind of what? Of the way of the word. That is why the Bible is speaking in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Um, it says that what? That do not what? Conform to this word, but be a what? Transformed by what? The renewal of your what? Of your mind. So when we are renewing our mind constantly by his word, what is happening? We are increasing in what? Understanding of his ways. Do you get what I'm saying? Because we are what? Const now, look at it. Verse 98. We're getting somewhere. Together, don't worry. It says, Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me what? Wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Next verse now. I have what? 
I have more understanding than all my what? Teachers. How did this understanding, how was it produced? Because of what? I meditate on your law all day. Every time. So because of meditation, my understanding is increasing. You can, it is possible to read something and not understand it. You can read through something, glance straight in, but you don't understand it. Many of us, we read. It's not about covering material or anything. People have covered material, but there's nothing covered in their head. It's, sorry. It's just... You know, it's not about reading it. It's like... Brrr, brrr. P, uh, Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch and he said that, understand that what thou readest. Do you understand what you are reading? And then he said that, how will I understand it except somebody explain it to me? So... He says, ah, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my what? Meditation. For thy testimonies are my meditation. So the testimony here is what? It's the word of God. We break the, the testimony into two. New Testament and what? Old Testament. We're talking about the word of God here. The Bible is testimony. Are you surprised? You're surprised? Testament. His testimony. Your testament are my what? Are my meditation. So I am meditating on your testament as on your testimonies. And because of this meditation, what is happening? Understanding is being produced. And now go to the next verse and then I would. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I keep your ways. So when we read God's word to understand, that's why the Bible is speaking in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, Thou shalt what? Meditate on what? On the book of the law. Let me say, the book of the law shall not what? Depart out of what? Thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt what? Make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. Not just success, but good success. So, when we meditate, we understand more. And when we understand, when God's word comes to us directly, this is what he wants to do. We just move in. We just move. And when we're moving, our results are always successful. The other part then that our body needs to cooperate in, we'll talk about that um, tomorrow. Um, I said tomorrow, next week, and as we have miracle service, it's going to be an action. You have to speak. There are people who speak what they don't believe. There are people who speak what they don't understand. Many of you here, you've answered questions in class you don't understand. Am I correct? You've given... You have read... Math, you have, the teacher is asking you, I didn't have you. Looking at it like you just you don't understand. You don't understand it's showing. You know, sir, amen. Am I touching you people on the wrong sides? Uh, amen. You're just saying things. Pythagoras theorem, Geluzak law. Do you understand? You're just quoting. Huh? It's in physics and chemistry. It's, no, Pythagoras is in maths. But Geluzak is in where? Amen. Do you understand? So, it is important to understand. Many of you use studied maths in school. You don't understand what you were solving. Find X. You have found X. Nothing. That X, what do you use the X to do? You don't understand. I was speaking, this is the last thing, don't worry. I was speaking with somebody like all this mathematics, all this quadratic equation. It's like these are practical things that we produce and uh, like, produce within. Me, I, I do that thing to pass why I can beg in my life alone. <laughs> do you understand? Just so, like, but this mathematics is practical, but I don't understand it. I just, you know, I just, I, or maybe my level of understanding is small in it just to pass. That's why, but now somebody is bringing in the practicality of mathematics. You know, they tell us in school that mathematics is life, right? But you are still looking for the life in the maths. <laughs> Do you understand? A amen. You're still looking for it. So, I pray God will help us in Jesus. So, as we meditate on his word day and night, understanding is produced. And just to add to this, still in the mind, <laughs> is... In the mind, I remember I said function is what? Of the uh, mind is what? Understanding. And you see, when God wants to do things through his people, he always gives them pictures. That's why you need spiritual exposures. You know, things. What God is doing somewhere else. Some of you, you think you are doing very well until you go out 
and you see people that are doing better than you and you'll be humble and begin to strive for more. Because of what? You now have a picture. God has said, I want you to be great. You are this, when he say you he wants you to be great, what you are thinking about is I get Ferrari, I get um, us, and that is based on your what your exposure. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you, there's an exposure when God. I don't want to go there so that I don't read so much. Is um, Abraham when he was going to talk about um, the children he was going to have? What did God tell him to do? To look. Can you count the number of stars? He wanted a picture in his mind that he would carry that this is possible. So, we must, and, oh my God, oh Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. I don't want to take these people's time here. Last thing I will say. Come back, amen. Amen. Um, when you say you want to be, how many of us are in medical school because uh, one, uh, we were in medical school school and one of the inspirations we got was Ben Carson. You, who else? You, you, you. Before that time, anything about being a medical doctor is maybe somebody around your house, a doctor who is treating, or maybe an uncle is a doctor. And then you open, I'm just giving an instant, you open Nkasi's book and you're like, wow, a doctor can be great like this. That's this, do you understand? You were inspired by it. You began to see possibility, though some people have given up already in the possibility. And then, you know, nobody ever imagined that they, they could, what, separate twins. And then a man brought it, he did it, and then he documented it and said that it is possible. And he began to see the possibility. And it further energizes you. And you know that if you've not gotten to this point, if you've not gotten close to this point, you know you've not done anything. You look through the Bible, and then Jesus Christ, you know, Thousands were coming to listen to him. And then, because I've seen it in, the, in God's word, I know that ministry is for nations, for thousands, for multitudes, for millions. And then I look at physical examples also. I, you see pictures of maybe Crusade, Ben Kasi, I say Ben Kasi, Benny In, all these people doing great. Then your mind is open that this is possible. And what is your instant response? You begin to find what is the secret. What was, you know, when you see somebody doing great things, you ask, her, what is he doing that I am not doing? Do you understand? So what has happened? You've been exposed. And then you want to now understand what he is doing that you're not doing. And then you find, oh, this is what he did. Ah, uh-huh. And then you keep working on it. So, understanding. Get, you know, get on God's word every day. Every day. It's not some days. It's not only in church. Some of you, your Bible apps, once you close it today, it's maybe home group, you open it. And then after home group, next Sunday, you, do you understand? When you open the app, after that, read, the next time you are reading your Bible, say, oh, I know the scripture. Yeah. It's just, you remember the meeting? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, do we have witnesses in the room? Come on. You guys are pretty. Oh, Bible scholars in TWC. Hallelujah. Some of you, is only that money one. You, you have shared that scripture in the morning on your status. The next thing you are going to open it is yesterday's scripture. Do I have a witness here? At least you are using the app every day. <laughs> There's nothing bad. You, baby steps. Tell your neighbor baby steps. Baby steps, baby steps. Amen. But you get it, you keep increasing. So, not to make, uh, take our time. I've taken the time already. Next, ye, 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 ye. I did not know that time was fly, is flying. Amen. Oh, but how many of us have been blessed here today? Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll just keep increasing. Next Sunday, let me just be speaking now because it looks like those people, they've started their conference so that we don't disturb them much. Um, next Sunday is going to be miracle service. Um, we, we've been planning for this. We've been praying for this. And I encourage as many of us who want to fast towards that program, please do fast. Um, God is going to move greatly in this place and invite people. Invite me. We're going to see the supernatural at work in this place like never before in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of, so come hungry. This is come hungry for God. God moving in us and through us in this place greatly in the name of Jesus. So next Sunday, and then we're going to finish this, um, this and this part because the upper Sunday we'll talk about faith a little bit, but it's going to be young and free. And I want to encourage us. Uh, where's Brenton? Brenton, lift up your hands. You can stand up. Do I have people who are talented in this room? You can rap, you can sing, and everything. Who else? I know you, you're a rapper, right? Or you're a dancer? You're a prayer warrior. Amen. You look like a rapper. Do you have an album already? Oh, okay. Like, just, just, amen. Like, um, all of you, 
Uh, oh, we have Bishop Spills here. Amen. Amen. So, after this service, reach out to him. Young and free is going to be a blast. We're going to turn this place. You know, we're young. We're going to serve God the Gen Z way. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So, um, but next Sunday, um, reach out. This place, we're going to move. The, the Spirit of God is going to move greatly in this place. Uh, but even starting from now, uh, one thing we're going to leave here with. We're going to leave here with clear words from God. Even while I was speaking, God was already addressing situations in your life. I'm going to establish this. Just know that situations, I shared a testimony here today. And um, there, for somebody who is probably, like, I shared a testimony regarding my two brothers and uh, one person's promotion. And now I'm speaking God's word right now to some, a couple of persons. Because this is testimony I'm sharing right now. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus Christ is what? It's prophecy. And so this is prophecy being released to somebody here. If you have a family member who, who has been believing God for promotion, they're going to be promoted this week in the name of Jesus. That's the first one. The second one, still based on that testimony, if you have um, a family member who is looking for a job or looking for, believing God for visa or establishment in family, this week it's activated in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is God's word. Receive it, believe it in your heart, and, you know, just give yourself completely to it. And maybe it is you who is here. You're believing God for a good job. You believe in God for promotion, for upliftment. In the name of Jesus, every gang up against you at the place of your work, they will be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone who has come in here sick today, they live here completely healed in the name of Jesus. Henceforth, you begin to see the miraculous work food in your life in the name of Jesus. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover in the mighty name of Jesus. Every sickness returns back to hell completely in the name of Jesus. Some of you here, you are timid. Boldness is released over your life in the name of Jesus. It starts today in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop hiding under the, 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 the banner of, oh, I am an introvert. In the name of Jesus Christ, you begin to do things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Then has it come into the minds of any man in the name of Jesus. You begin to do great things for God in the name of Jesus. Your ends are blessed in the name of Jesus. Your families are blessed in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you this week shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. You will call upon the name of God and he will answer you in the name of Jesus. Some of you open God's word and begin to understand it like never before in the name of Jesus. Zeal for the word of God. Hunger for God's word in his presence in the name of Jesus. Can we just be on our feet? I know I've given declarations but I just want us to very simple instruction. Very simple instruction. I'm going to sing one or two songs. You worship and as we are worshiping, God is, is going to be speaking to you, addressing areas in your life. It must not be so loud. Addressing areas in your life and giving you clear words for your life and destiny. And all I just want you to do is to look unto Jesus Christ. Just get your eyes on him. We're talking about your spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
is like you, Lord, in all the earth. Matchless love and beauty, endless world. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, who is like you, Lord? Just soft. Who is like you, Lord, in all the air? Much less love. Much less love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. And with our voice, we sing, Your presence is heaven. Your presence is heaven. Is heaven. To me, Lord. To me. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. Your presence. Your presence that family is member with cancer is healed right now. Oh, 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 Jesus. oh, Jesus. oh, 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 um, your mom is a breadwinner in your family and um, she's been the one training you the last couple of years. A lot of things have actually been sold already. It's been struggle. And this is God's word clearly to two of you. This week, there is a great door that is being opened to your mom in particular. She would have every cause to celebrate. She's going to call you this week and break the news to you, both of you, that see what the Lord has done. That is going to be the song that she would have in her mouth. See what God has done. See what God has done. See what God has done. And then another word again here is for a very large family here. You guys have so many siblings in your family and then it's been a struggle. Multiple doors in that family is open this week. Look, we're not talking about next week. You know, this week, Sunday begins the week. And this very week, a lot is activated in your families in the name of Jesus. Amen. And all I would just encourage you to do, just keep soaking in God. Keep soaking with Him, soaking in the presence of God. Just multiply your understanding. Take advantage of this season. Please, TWC, take advantage of this season we are in. If you need help with prayers, join us every night, 20, um, um, 10 p.m. We're praying online. Just join us. Just get closer to God. Multiply your understanding. Get in touch with the home group. Join home group. This is not an advertisement. I'm telling you, I want you to maximize the season we are in. There's a lot God is doing. Faith is an offensive instrument. The word of God is offensive. And you are moving upward in God. You're moving upward in God. You're moving upward. See, look, some of you, you begin to excel in your academics like never before. It has started in this season already in the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, your mom in particular, is traveling for an interview this week. She gets it with ease in the name of Jesus. She gets it with ease in the name of Jesus. Father, we... Oh, there's somebody here... That which is due to you, that you even forgot about. You waited and waited and it didn't come. And then you forgot about it. It has been released this week in the name of Jesus. It has been released. It has been released. Father, we give you praise, Lord. Be that glorified in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Besides these words, there were words he also spoke to your heart. 
Just run with it. Run with it. Run with it. God's word has been spoken in this place. And we believe it in our hearts. Somebody do something great to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, we're going to take offering right